116 people have died on our roads compared to 103 last year. So we're up about 18%. When you compare this to the murder rate, which was recently announced in Parliament, they are down 8%. We're having a big problem here. And therefore, as a country, we need to understand that this is the second leading cause of sudden death in our country. And the figures show that we're not taking it as seriously as we ought to. Too many people are driving carelessly on our roads. Too many people are not wearing their seat belts. Far too many people are not wearing their helmets. That's a major problem we have in this country. In Jamaica, approximately 66% or two-thirds of the people who die on our roads are what you call vulnerable road users. That is the pedestrians, the pedal cyclists, and the motorcyclists. And pedestrians account for about 33% of those who are down our roads. So it's a huge problem. And even though we have managed to reduce the road fatality from over 400 when it was started in 1993 to below 300 in 2012. We have made a big dent in the number of pedestrians who are dying on our roads. What the police are observing is a phenomenon which we need to take very careful note of, that people are failing to keep to the left. What it means is that they're being distracted. They're being distracted by cell phones, Believe it or not, they are being distracted by watching tel television in the cars. Sounds like madness, but it's true. And also, they are being distracted by whether conversations in the cars, whether they are consuming too much alcohol. Um, a number of things are accounting for this, and we're trying to zero in on this. Hopefully this year, the new road traffic act will come in, uh, which will prescribe, that is, you can't you will not be allowed to use your cell phone without a hands-free device. And once that comes in there, we can get the data to establish what some believe is a problem right now in Jamaica, that far too many people are using their cell phones, using it carelessly, and people are being distracted. To make a traffic offence a criminal offence, I think we'll be moving against the current trend in jurisprudence. Um, and if you read an article recently in the Gleaner where there was an eminent lawyer, I think he was the past public defender, speaking about the whole issue of people going to, to jail and coming out <clears throat> and not being able to get a job because they have a criminal record, not being able to travel because of a criminal record. And it therefore complicates the process in terms of rehabilitation and making the person a useful person in society. And he's arguing that <clears throat> in many cases, what you could possibly do is not have the particular law that the person has broken being made into a criminal offense except and beyond the person does it several times, or more than, I think he said more than once, um, with a view to encouraging this person um, to come back into society and be a useful member of society. So I think if we, were to, if we were to go that route, it would be going against a trend where people are now trying as best as they can in an instance where it is not an, a really egregious um, crime for a criminal record to be applied against the persons. One is the, the issue of people driving, breaking the law, getting a ticket, getting points against their license, and still able to drive around without any care. Presently, the, the law constrains us in that um, even if somebody exceeds the 12 points, which would mandate the removal or suspension of their license. Um, there is no single agency that has that power. It has to go to the court. And because of problems with the traffic ticketing system, the courts are reluctant to, 
to act in that fashion. When the law, when the new law comes into place, the, as far as I understand it, the Island Traffic Authority will have that mandate to automatically suspend people's license when you have exceeded your 12 demerit points. So that's one major thing that's going to happen. So a lot of those many bus drivers, the shuttle drivers, those who are out and about, you must have heard about them. Um, and it's amazing, you know, I'm, I'm hearing about out and about. I was on another television program where people actually pay the minibus drivers to go on the left and get around the traffic so they can, they can get home um, quickly, which is just madness, but that's another story. The other thing which is going to come into play is the, the tire depth. Right now, there is no clear requirement that you have to have your tires to a certain standard in order for you to drive on the roads or to be passed at the, um, the depot. The law will prescribe a tire depth, um, and if that is breached, then you're in trouble. The other major issue which has been in the public domain is the question of tinting of uh, motor vehicles. And we have had vigorous debates um, across the country. There will be an internationally um, accepted norm and standard applied to tinting, which I think will put the matter to rest once and for all.